Yesterday's Prophecies for Today's World. When anyone, anywhere responds to this knowledge by having a desire to know this God, God will move heaven and earth to get the message to And now, the continuation of Hal Lindsey's Bible study, The Book of Revelation. We started, actually, last week on Revelation chapter 6. And uh, I went through and showed that chapter 6 through 19 covers the events of a seven-year period. And uh, I talked about the fact that uh, there are vignettes interjected in the chronological order that explain the main uh the main events, the main people, the main actors that are the most important during the seven-year period. But uh, I realized that I didn't really establish to my satisfaction how we know this is a seven-year period. Now, God loves to divide things into different ages. And the Bible looks at mankind's history this is kind of God's outline of history. We're over here. This is the age of grace. This is the church age. This is the age about which nothing was written in the Old Testament. The church is in the age of grace, and the church was never mentioned until Jesus mentioned it before his disciples in Matthew chapter 16. Now, when this age ends, this age began with a miracle of the Holy Spirit being sent to dwell in every believer in Jesus Christ. That was unique. That's something that never happened before. Only select few were chosen to be given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, prophets, kings, and so forth. And that was on a temporary basis. That's why David prayed after his uh, great fall with uh, Bathsheba and engineering her uh, husband being murdered and so forth. He prayed in Psalm 51, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And he knew that that was a great treasure of his life, that the Holy Spirit had actually dwelt in him. Today. To pray that same prayer would be an insult to God because God says that every person from the moment he or she believes in Jesus Christ is permanently indwelt by the Holy Spirit. He dwells in every one of you who have trusted in him. And he does not take the Holy Spirit away. Even if we're out of fellowship, he doesn't take the Holy Spirit away. The Holy Spirit it says in uh, Ephesians, it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit in whom you have been sealed until the day of redemption. So you're sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, and that's when you get your resurrection body. So you have the Holy Spirit. But it does say, uh, stop, uh, stop grieving the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the idea is the Holy Spirit can be grieved by willful sin in your life, but he doesn't leave. Turn to Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Now, I have done a lot of translating work on this passage, so it may sound a little different than what you have there, but believe me, it's what the Hebrew says. It says 77s are sabbatical years are decreed for your people and your holy city. So the, the decree is concerning two things. Your people, Israel, and your holy city, Jerusalem. And then he names six things that are to be accomplished within the scope of that allotment of time. 70 sabbatical years, or 490 years. 
Then it says in verse 25, Know and understand this, from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, comes, there will be seven sabbatical years and 62 sabbatical years, or 62 sevens. It's in the Hebrew, it's just Shavuim Shavim, seven sevens. And it's referred, it's in a context. Daniel chapter 9 is in a context where Daniel was asking about what was going to be the future of Israel. And God had put them into Babylonian captivity because they had failed to keep 70 sabbatical years. And that's important to God. All the time that they became a nation, they failed to keep even one sabbatical year. And that means they were to sit down and they were not to plant their fields. They were not to do any work on the, every seventh year. And they were just to trust the Lord and spend their time learning about the Lord and praising the Lord and uh, talking to each other about the scripture and so forth. And God said, this will show your faith to the nations that I am real because I will take care of you, though you don't do anything for a whole year. And that was very important to God because that was part of the reason he created this nation. They were basically created to be a witness to all of the other nations that were trying to push God out of their memory. And so after 490 years of not doing that, God, just as he warned through the prophet Jeremiah, he snatched them up and took them to uh, Babylon. And it says, as long as you're in Babylon, the earth shall enjoy its Sabbaths for 70 years. And so it's in that context that this was given. So that's why we know he, just as they failed to keep 70 sabbatical years, he allots them another 70 sabbatical years to fulfill the reason for which they were created. Do you follow me? Okay. Now that's the, that's the underlying premise of this prophecy, which is the greatest single prophecy in the Bible. Now, he says that, uh, therefore, understand from, and I underline my Bible, so there, there, there are some prepositions and conjunctions here that are extremely important, so I under, underline them. First, from, and then until the Messiah, there will be seven sabbatical years and 62 sabbatical years. Now you add that up in uh, terms of the sabbatical years, it comes to 483 years, 69 sabbatical years. And then he says, after, underline that word, after the 62 sabbatical years, which is the last section of that time period, Jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and moats, but in times of trouble. And says, after, six, after the 62 sevens, the Messiah will be cut off and will have nothing. All right. So th that's very important. From until after. All right. From marks the beginning of the time clock starting. Of this allotted time. He said, from the decree that's issued to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. That was given, we know exactly when it was given, by Artaxerxes Langemanus of Persia. And that started the allotment of time clicking, okay? So, exactly 483 years later, now, these are biblical years, 360 days. 
173,880 days from the time Artaxerxes Longimanus of Persia issued that decree to not just allow them to rebuild the walls and the temple, but the city and the temple. And that's why we know it wasn't the other decrees. It was only the one that Artaxerxes Longimanus gave. All right. From that time, the 173,880 173, years later, Jesus marched into Jerusalem on a donkey and for the first time allowed himself to be declared the Messiah, the son of David. For that, he wouldn't allow anyone to do that. He did that because he knew that was the exact day Daniel had predicted the Messiah would come to be anointed. And it happened exactly, precisely on the day that Daniel predicted it would occur. Now, critical to understanding this is that it says in verse 26, after, after what? After the Messiah, the Prince, comes. So we go 173,880 days, and then after that, two very important historical events would take place. The first, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. Cut off in Hebrew is an idiom for being put to death being executed. So it says that after that, that exact time period, the Messiah would be executed and have nothing. In other words, the things that were promised in the Old Testament about that would be taken away. All right, now, that happened one week after Jesus marched in and fulfilled the prophecy by coming in, as Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 said, he would come in riding on a donkey. Now, the second event is what's very important. It says, after 62 sons, the Messiah will be cut off and will have nothing. Then the people of the prince who shall come will destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end and desolations have been decreed. Okay. When was Jerusalem destroyed? 70 AD. All right, well, that tells us something very important. If the time clock of allotted time kept running, it would have been over long before 70 AD, wouldn't it? So it tells us that the after means the clock was stopped. And then these two events take place, one at least 37 years later. So it shows the clock was stopped and there's a big gap between the Messiah being executed and having nothing and what we read in verse 27. Now look in verse 27. He will confirm a covenant with the many for one seven. See, there's our lost sabbatical year. I wish the translators would just translate it the way it should be, that they say one week. But it means, you see, in the Hebrew calendar, they had weeks of days and weeks of years. We go by decades. They went by sabbatical years and sabbatical weeks of days. But this is talking about sabbatical years. So when the Messiah came, Jesus came exactly on time. This is why he, he, he burst into tears when he looked at Jerusalem as he was riding the donkey down into the city. And he said to them, if only you had known on this your day 
the things that were planned for you. And now they're hidden from your eyes. And you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, we come to verse 27 and it says, He will confirm a covenant with the many for one seven. And this is part of this whole prophecy. They still have seven years allotted to them to finish the purposes for which God created them as a nation. Now, they fulfilled many of them. But the one big purpose the Jews never, or the Israelites never uh, completed, was to evangelize the world. And it says, that last week will begin when he, and I ask you, who is he? You see, you have to, in, in uh, studying any, in any language, you, to find out who a, uh, of whom a pronoun is speaking, you have to go back to the last person in context that's named. Who is the last person in the context before this that was named? The prince that would come, right? See, I'm not pulling any rabbits out of the hat. By the way, somebody, somebody had a wonderful sense of humor. They gave me a bottle of wine that says rabbit. It was the, a rabbit vintage. She said, since you'd like to chase rabbits, we thought you'd love to chase this one. And I did enjoy it. All right, now uh, back to business here. Uh, he will confirm a covenant with the many for one seven. Now, but in the middle of the final seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. Now, what does that tell us? To put an end to sacrifice and offering, what do you got to have? Got it. You got it. My, you're good students. Now, he will put an end to it, though. And then it says, and on, the, on a wing of the abomination will come the one that causes desolation. Now, that's from the Hebrew. On the wing of an abomination, he will cause, the, the, uh, will come the one, and that's the prince who shall come, that causes desolation, even to until a complete destruction, one that is decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. All right, now, it, it divides up this final week here, this little period of time right there. But there is probably more scripture about that little period of time than any other single comp comparative period of time. Because... What happens in those seven years is so important that we have tremendous numbers of prophecy about it. So here we have it. First, the church, which is every living believer, is going to be snatched out of the world. Immediately, the Antichrist will be revealed. He'll be unveiled. And he will immediately mesmerize the world. I think there's going to be, a, that the world is really going to be at a turbulent time and they're desperate to find some leader that can get them out of it, see? And that's why I see so many things developing right now that I think are going to explode. Now, the good thing is, I read the end of the book and we ain't going to be here. I sure hope you're following me because, uh, you know, I'm throwing a lot of details at you. And I hate to do that. But I know the Holy Spirit can teach us all. Look, he taught me. 
That's a miracle. Now, this here then is going to be the fulfillment of why God created Israel. They're going to accomplish what he calls. And one of the, you know, one of the other purposes, they are going to, they are going to do in seven years what they haven't done in their whole history. They're going to evangelize the whole world. Led by 144,000 Jewish Billy Grahams. Because they are going to be specially anointed, specially gifted. We'll see that when I get to chapter 7. And so I believe that it's very, very important that we understand that that is one of the things they have not fulfilled and they are to do it. The second reason is that uh, God is going to use these terrible events that take place during that seven years to so drive the Israelites to despair that they're going to finally look up and see who their real Messiah is. And in, in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10 says, they shall look on me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for me as one mourns for his only son. It's all pre-written. And uh, they will see the wounds that they will feel personally responsible for. And that there'll be a tremendous number that'll be brought to faith in Jesus as their Messiah during this time. And all of them will become evangelists. Now, I want you to look at something else. I'm spending a lot of time on this because if you get, if you get this right at this point, you'll understand the rest of the book of Revelation. But uh, you you got to get it right. Now, let's confirm that this is going to be seven years. Look at Revelation chapter 11. And uh, look at verses 2 and 3. Now, there's a lot going on in these verses. I'm not going to try to deal with everything. I only, I only want to pinpoint two points. All right, in chapter 11, verse 2. Leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. And they will tread underfoot the holy city for how long? 42 months. How many years is that? Three and a half. All right. Then verse 3. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. How many years is that? Two, three and a half, 360 day years. So, you see, the 42 months when the Gentiles are going to tread Jerusalem underfoot is the second half of this week. The 1260 days that these prophets preach in Jerusalem will be the first half. Now, I'm going to read something that is, has mystified interpreters of prophecy for a long time. You don't have to turn there, just mark it, mark it and read it later. I'll read it to you. Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Here is a conclusion to the prophecies that Daniel was given. It says, from the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. How blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains to the 1,335 days. 
What do you think that is? All right, now notice we're talking about the second half of the tribulation here. Because remember back in Daniel 9, 27, it says that the Antichrist would cause sacrifice and uh, sacrifices to stop. So he says here that from the, uh, from the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished, and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. So why is 30 days added? I can only give you uh, a sanctified guess. I believe that this is when Je Jesus comes back. The first thing he's going to do is that he's going to gather all Gentiles together. And that's in Matthew 25. And in Ezekiel 20, he says he's going to gather all Israelites together. The Gentiles will be uh, gathered in the valley just outside of Jerusalem. The Israelites are going to be gathered. Now, they, we're talking about survivors. We're talking about those who survived this period. The Israelites are going to be gathered out by Mount Sinai. And both are going to be judged, the Gentiles in one place, the Israelites in another. See, it's segregated, which is proof positive the church is not there. Because if the church were there, what would be the case? There's no difference between a Jew and a Gentile. All right, now, I believe that it is the gathering of all of these people in the 30 days that is after that seven years takes place when the Messiah Jesus comes back. Thank you so much for standing with me as a watchman on the wall. I pray daily that he will reward your faithfulness and protect and prosper you in these difficult times. Thank you again for being a vital part of my team. Join us next week for the continuation of Hal Lindsey's Bible study of the book of Revelation. You can find more of Hal Lindsey at his website, www.howlindsey.com. There you can access our video and article archives. Visit our online store for Hal Lindsey CDs, books, and other specialty items. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma. 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit howlindsay.com or call 1 888 Rapture.